Good morning from Colorado. This is Michael Dix with the Trimble Geospatial Division. Uh, on the line from Trimble as well, we have Jeff Blanton, uh, who's our product manager for the Site Vision solution. Uh, we also have Miko Ramos, uh, who's on our uh, technical team. I guess you could say he's done a lot of the tutorial videos you may have seen online um, for how to use Site Vision in a very tactical way. Um, so they are both with us uh, on the line. Um, so I'm going to turn over to Jeff in a couple seconds. He is uh, going to go through the, the full Site Vision rundown. Um, in the meantime, though, if you do have questions, there's a questions box that you can ask anything you like, and we'll do our best to get to as many questions as we can. Uh, so with that, Jeff, I will turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Michael. Um, as Michael said, I'm the geospatial product manager for Site Vision, and uh, I am working remotely today from Florida. Um, so this webinar is intended to give a good overview of Site Vision, uh, what it is, some of the functionality. I'll do, uh, I'll touch on some of the data preps, data workflows. Uh, this isn't intended to be a deep dive of, of the data workflows. I do plan on it. Uh, hosting more of these webinars where we'll get into the details with some of the workflows with TBC and and, um, and um, GIS workflows. So with that, uh, I'll get my slide to change. Uh, the agenda, I've already done the introductions. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what Site Vision is. I'll go over getting start, started with Site Vision, how to get your subscriptions, and go over settings. And then, like I mentioned, some of the data prep stuff, and then hopefully we'll have enough time at the end to show a quick video and answer any questions that, that you might have. So what is Site Vision? Um, Trimble Site Vision is what we like to call our high accuracy 3D augmented reality system. Uh, when I say high accuracy, I mean um, survey grade centimeter accuracy, depending on, on your, your data. Um, we paired our DA1 Catalyst antenna with uh, Google's AR core to create the uh, um, 3D model in a real world context at the accuracy that you would expect um, if you're in, a, in the survey or GIS world. So with Site Vision, what you can do, you can visualize, uh, visualize your data. Um, like I mentioned, uh, high accuracy, uh, it's intended for outdoor use only. It, being that uh, you're connected to the GNSS and indoors will not work very well uh, um, with Site Vision. You can display models indoors or in uh, hostile environments where GNSS isn't very good uh, with a manual placement. And I'll go into that a little bit later. Uh, also collaborate. So imagine you have a, a design, we'll just say a, a new building. Um, and you're the designer, you can take your stakeholders, you can the owner of the building or, or whoever's involved with that project, you can load up your model in, in Site Vision, take it out to the field, place that model in the real world, world right where it would sit once the construction is completed. Uh, stakeholders can view that, uh, give any feedback, uh, you can highlight any potential setbacks that you might see before construction starts, that's the collaborating piece. Um, so interacting with the, with your stakeholders is is key. Uh, most people don't understand a 2D map or looking at a map or conceptual drawing and, and, and visualizing that in the real, real world where site vision allows users that don't necessarily understand uh, geospatial data to understand it completely. And then also you're able to report on that what you see in the field using the camera functions or some of our uh, EDMs by creating to-dos and adding that into, into Connect and sharing that with, with your team. So I'll just click, go right ahead, right ahead and get started with uh, Site Vision. So what you'll need to start off, obviously you'll need the Site Vision app, which you can get from the Google Play Store. You'll need good Wi-Fi or at least a, a good 4G connectivity somewhere. Uh, the Site Vision Kit, which you see here when purchasing Site Vision, comes with this case. The, the bracket, which has the DA1 antenna on top already. There is a pole mount, so you can mount this to a monopole. 
uh, for uh, heights, battery chargers, battery charger and batteries, and, and this little sunshade. Um, you'll need a valid Sight Vision subscription, uh, also Android 9 or later phone with AR Core support. Uh, you'll need a phone case uh, and uh, and a to mount, uh, there's a little mounting bracket, which I'll talk about here in a minute uh, on, on the phone and a, obviously a phone charger. The phone does not come with Sight Vision, so that is a separate purchase. Um, some of the nice to have, uh, I mentioned the monopole. This is a, a pole that Trimble offers. And, um, currently, it's only available on our CEC division. Uh, I have set it up so it will be available for uh, survey and GIS customers as well. Uh, once I have that part number, I'll get that posted for everyone so um, they can contact their dealers and the dealers can can order that that monopole. It's a, it's a really nice pole, um, it's adjustable, uh, 1.3 meters, and, and it, it, depending on how tall you are, you can adjust the height uh, to view sight vision. And then these couple other ones you can order online uh, as well. I would recommend the monopole, my personal preference. A site vision subscription, as I mentioned, you'll have to have a outside oh, outside the hardware. Excuse me, I'm having trouble speaking today. Um, you'll need a site vision subscription, and to in order to have a subscription, you would need to create a Trimble ID. Um, that's a free uh, ID that you you create to for to be part of the cloud network within Trimble. Uh, you would go in, if you don't have a Trimble ID already, that you would follow this website, uh, web.connect.trimble.com, and that would take you to a, a create your Trimble ID uh, web page. Um, once you have a subscription, uh, you'll receive um, an email welcoming you into the Site Vision community. Uh, and with that license, I'm sorry, back up. In the email, there's a link to a license manager. Once you have a number of licenses, or if, if you have more than one, you can would open that license manager, add in the users within your organization, and then assign them the license a license to Site Vision. Uh, also, in a license manager, if you want to remove that license from someone you assign that to, you just simply hit the X remove the license from that user, and then you, you, it's available to assign to another user. Um, one thing I do want to note for those that are, are familiar with Catalyst, uh, Catalyst and Catalyst On Demand are, are separate su subscriptions uh, that and, and don't work interchangeably with Site Vision. So your Site Vision subscription comes with Trimble VR Snell and uh, RCX CenterPoint and uh, business level Trimble Connect account. Uh, that's all packaged in the Site Vision subscription. So if you have a separate Catalyst uh, subscription, you you won't be able to use that with the bracket and the DA1 antenna with Site Vision, and vice versa. You can't use the Site Vision on a, on a separate Catalyst uh, DA1 antenna subscription. Hopefully that made sense there. We do have a number of recommended smart recommended smartphones to use. They're all listed here um, and, and on, on our website. We may have, have a couple added on since I, I made this slide here or, or since Miko made this slide here. Um, and if you go with one of our recommended phones, the setup is much easier. Uh, it, the, there's camera offsets in there uh, that will automatically populate. If you don't, if you use a phone that's not recommended, you'll have to do those cameras offsets on your own. Now I'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit down the, through the slides. Uh, the phone case, we recommend the Otterbox Symmetry, which is a fairly inexpensive phone case. And one of the reasons for the, the, the phone case is that this is the mounting bracket I'm talking about, was talking about. This comes with your sight vision kit. And there are instructions on how to apply this. And once you apply it, it's pretty much permanent. So if you if you're using your phone for personal use as well or, or other functions other than sight vision, you may not want to have this 
mount on there so you, you can easily remove the case and not have to worry about that mount being in your way. All right, before we go out in the field, a couple of things you want to do. Uh, once you've downloaded SciVision and installed it on your uh, Android device, now when you do download uh, SiteVision on your Android device, it does, it, it checks your phone to make sure it has all the required uh, software such as the uh, Catalyst and, and uh, the AR Core is up to date. Uh, if it's not, it will give you a, a message and ask if you want to update that information or that software and you just simply say yes and, and it will go through the updating process for you. Um, once you have that completed, you're going to want to do your camera offer sets. And like I said, if you only, if you use a recommended phone, you do not have to worry about the camera offsets. They're automatically populated. If you if you don't use a phone that's recommended, um, the, pain, the, the process is a little bit painful, uh, I have to say. Measuring millimeters from the camera center to the, the face and the antenna, the center of the bracket, and, and getting all those offsets can be a bit challenging, but we do have uh, a good how-to sheet on how, how to do that. And you also want to calibrate the, the EDM as, as well before you get started out in the field. And I'll show you where, where you can do that here uh, in a couple more slides. Uh, obviously, make sure you have your batteries in the charged and you have your uh, Wi-Fi hotspot or 4G data. Um, all right, I'll just go right into um, loading a model. So once you created a, a model, you have a data set that, that you want to use as a model in the field, you'll simply load that model in the Tremble Connect. You'll create a, a Tremble Connect project folder. I like to call it project folder uh, in the Connect project. Uh, upload that data. Tremble the Connect will do some assimilating, which usually takes, depending on the file size, uh, anywhere from a minute to, to 10 minutes. I haven't seen any go much past 10 minutes. Um, it will do some assimilating. Once the assimilation process is done, you'll get a, a warning if you if you set up notifications that the assimilation part is done, and you can start using that model in the field. Uh, so uh, what you're looking at over here on the left is, is a screenshot from um, the SiteVision app. Uh, we'll start off with the, the load model. We'll open up Trimble Connect uh, on the phone device for you, which is, is the cloud. Choose the folder that you want to go into and then select your model. Uh, once you've done that, it will automatically bring that model down to the phone for you. And then at that point, we're ready to do a model placement. Now with the model, we have three methods for uh, model placement. Once the model is downloaded, you'll select place model. Now, uh, the most accurate uh, model placement is the auto placement. Uh, so if you have a good quality data set, uh, coordinate system assigned to it, and you load up that, mo load that model, um, you'll see autos not listed here uh, as a selection. Once your GNSS is uh, initialized and you have calibrated your compass um, by walking, um, what is it, 30, 30 yards, 30 meters, no, yeah, uh, you will it will automatically place your model in the real world where it belongs, uh, um, horizontally and vertically, uh, depending on, obviously, if your model's uh, 3D. Uh, the second most accurate uh, um, model placement is the measured placement, which I like to call real-time geo-referencing. You'll just use two points within your model. So if you have uh, ex existing data, you're doing some underground utilities, and you may have a number of, of manholes or water valves on the ground. Uh, you could, you would go to the, one of those, take a, a three-second shot on that, tell SiteVision where you are in the model, and you'll say, I'm standing on this, this manhole. And then once it's done that, it'll ask you to go to a second point. You'll walk to a second point and, and do the same thing. You'll take another shot on it. Once you've done that, the, the software will do the processing for you. And then it will automatically place that model uh, or do the rotate translate and, and place that model in the real world where you expected it to be. Uh, the nice thing with the, the measured placement, once you've done this one time, it stores that uh, a, a calibration file or a, a JXL in, in the cloud 
with that model. So anytime you ever come back to that or, or someone else comes that back to that with a site vision, they log in uh, and they load that model, it will automatically place where it was placed that first time. Um, you can suspend that. So if you want to, weren't happy with your, your placement the first time, you could remove that, that geo-referencing and redo that again. And our least accurate uh, model placement method is the manual method. So um, essentially you'll load the model in the site vision, go to manual placement, and it will switch over to a 2D mode. You'll move the model around with your finger, place it where you, where you would like it. It will switch back to the 3D mode, and then you can move with your finger the model up and down, left and right. Um, so that's about as accurate as, as you can visualize. Um, and where this is used, so if you just want to do a quick look how your model is going to look inside Vision, you're in the office, you can load it up inside and then just take a look at what you're looking at or in poor GNSS areas where you're struggling to get initialized, you can manually place a model um, just to get a feel for what, what that model is going to look like in, in the real world. And as I said, that's the least accurate method probably won't be used very often. Uh, going into the, the tools of, of Sight Vision. So um, I'll just start at the top of the display settings. Um, you'll see here, you check on, click on display settings. It's gonna bring up this menu, uh, defaults to the 2D, 3D view uh, on, which is that, this little box down on the lower right. Uh, your layers, which is in the upper right hand, hand corner. And I'll touch on the layers again here in a little bit. Uh, uh, pit view. Uh, pit view is a very nice uh, feature. So what that does is, so if you're viewing underground utilities, you turn on the pit view. Uh, it, it places a, a circle on on your screen, which it kind of looks like a manhole. Has some lot graduation lines on it to give you a feel. And what that does is, when you're just looking at uh, underground utilities without the pit view, they're going to be laying on, on the ground. Uh, and with the pit view you'll be able to see it under the ground at the elevation that the model's in. So if you're at uh, uh, 10 feet below the surface, you'll, you'll see your, your power lines. For example, if I walked up to a manhole and I had the pit view on and I has five, five uh, outlets uh, coming out of that manhole, I, I could see at the bottom of that manhole and those outlets at the elevation that they were intended. Uh, the cross-section slider here, you turn that on and, and the little slider bar will, will pop up on the screen. And with this, you can cut out as you're walking, you can cut out cross sections of the model and, and view that in, in, uh, in profile uh, view and, and then view your uh, distance slider. Some other things you can change here is uh, you can change the color of your background, uh, whether you're lined with the screen size or, or world scale. scale. Uh, GNSS settings. So as I mentioned in the beginning, um, Site Vision comes with Trimble VR Now network and the RTX Center Point, which is our most uh, accurate RTX. It automatically comes with your subscription. So if you're using the or you're inside the VRS Now network, you'll probably just want to use leave the the Trimble Corrections Hub checked on, and this way it will automatically connect call in to the Correction service, uh, start the initialization process. Yeah, and if you're outside the VRS Now network, it will automatically switch to the RTX center point. Um, if you're outside the VRS Now network or you, you don't want to use the VRS Now, you can just uncheck the Trimble Correction Hub and then the, it will change to the, your in-trips in -trip settings. And uh, this is where you will enter in the URL address or the IP address, what, whichever you have the port, your account information, and, and then save that uh, so that when you come back to that model, you will connect that way rather than uh, the correction hub. Some of the configurations. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, with the EDM configuration, you will you open up the configurations and we have the EDM alignment here. You can hit the, the start button and then it, uh, Site Vision does a really good job of pretty much every step of the way uh, of giving you little directions and tips to to do the, the 
task that you're trying to perform. So with the EDM uh, calibration, you hit the start button, it will bring up a little target and you, you'll shoot a couple of targets with, in the office. You can do it outside, wherever you need, want to do that and to calibrate your, your camera. Um, when I mentioned earlier in the measured placement, so if you've done a measured placement, but you want to remove it, this is where you can either reset it or, or just suspend it. Uh, and then that file that was saved in the cloud is, is removed so that um, you can redo that measured placement. Change your units, angles, and, and how your coordinates are displayed in here as well. Also the language, I think this will default automatically to the language um, your phone is set to. Though, so you don't necessarily have to worry about changing that. Uh, under the advanced settings, so when you start Sight Vision, once you've gotten initialized, it's gonna ask you to walk um, so many meters or feet, well, however you have your unit set up. Um, this is where you can change that, right? It, now it defaults to 10 yards. Uh, so once you've you know, initialized, you'll see it will pop up, say walk a straight line for 10 yards. Once you've walked that, it calibrates and, and does the uh, compass orientation. Change your uh, accuracy for your GNSS. So if you're in a kind of a hostile environment and you're having trouble getting initialized, you can bump that up a little bit. Uh, um, and then this is where I was talking about the cell under advanced is the camera offset. So if you're using a phone that you that isn't one of the recommended phones, it will show up with all zeros like this. If you're using like, for example, the uh, Samsung S9, these will automatically populate for you. Um, if not, then you'll have to get a little ruler out and, and follow the directions to make all those measurements. And as I mentioned, I've done I did this before we had the auto populates and it was a bit of a painful process. Some of the EDM and uh, layer methods. So as I mentioned, I would talk about the layers a little bit more. Uh, you could just click on the layers button in the upper right hand corner. So what, if your model has a number of layers, you're using the DXF or a shape file or, or a sketch a file of some sorts and it has a number of layers in it. This is where you would open that up. And if it's getting a little cluttered on your screen or you only want to look at uh, manholes rather than all the lines that are coming in and out of them, this is where you would turn those layers on and off so you can view only what you want to, what you want to look at. And then some of the EDM settings. So we have this little, I don't know what you call this bar, it looks like grids. Uh, here you select that and you'll see we have the camera option. So what the camera does, it will, it will fire up the, the phone's camera and you can take a picture of what you're looking at um, of the real world and the model will be in that photo and, and it will open up a, a to-do menu. You will write in some notes in there. So if you have, want to make some edits or you see some, some problems, you put, put your notes in there and you submit that, that's automatically stored up in the cloud with your model information. Those folks back in the office can look at that information and they can start making the changes um, before you get in back from the field. Um, here in the middle, this is our uh, the EDM button. You, you select that um, and you can either use the EDM itself with the laser to take uh, some measurements. You can take some some shots. Uh, you can do that in the in the model, uh, in the real world, real world, the model, model, the real world and real world, the real world. Uh, many different methods uh, of taking some EDM shots. Now that it will create a little uh, point on, on the screen with the information behind that point, such as the, your distance, the orientation, uh, your any Z's of that point. All that information is stored in a CSV file and uploaded to the cloud. Uh, that uh, you cannot add new data to a model. So if you have a for example, a geo database uh, out in the field and, and you want to make some changes to some attributes or, or there's a new feature that wasn't there before. Um, you can take shots on it, make little notes on it and, and save that information to CSV. It will not place that in that model for you. Um, that the CSV you could later uh, um, import into your backend system, whether that's ArcMap or AutoCAD or, or whatever system that you might be using, and then add those points in at that at that time. But it's a couple of steps to get there, rather than it just uh, 
adding that right into the into the data set. Um, also, if you're using a surface model, so out in the field, you've you've done a, a topo and you've created a surface or a ten, you can upload that model in the site vision as well. And with this little button here, that is uh, cuts and fills. So you would have your mono pole on your um, EDN or your site vision bracket with uh, the rod height. You'll go out and stand on that surface, and wherever you're standing is going to let you know what where you're at on 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 that surface, whether you need to cut or fill. Uh, um, again, and you can save that information as well in a CSV file. The last one to the right here is is um, um, calculating slope, so I could cut or, or grades. I could uh, take a shot on the top of two manholes and get a grade from one manhole to the other the, the other manhole, and I believe a distance um, between those. And again, that information is all saved in a CSV file uh, and, and uploaded to the cloud for for you to use later, or for those in the office that might need it uh, to, to that information. Um, before I kind of flew through that, um, before I get into that, Michael, Miko, you guys, are there any questions that I might be able to answer on some of that before I move into this data prep? Uh, we have a, actually a lot of good questions that have come in. Um, do you uh, do you want to kind of keep going though, maybe, and and finish okay, it out, and then yeah, we'll just get to them at the end and kind of collect them all? Okay, I am going a little faster than I had thought I would. Um, so as I mentioned in the beginning, I'm going to touch on some of the data prep. Um, I'm not going to do any live demos or, or actual workflows. Um, I am going to schedule uh, on a consistent basis basis moving forward more webinars, kind of like if you're familiar with TBC Power Hours. So we're going to do kind of like Power Hours with the different data workflows and the data preps, so we can get do deep dives on those and answer any questions, or, or, or even maybe even look at some customer data sets and walk walk through those processes. But um, that wasn't the intention of this webinar today. But so I will touch on some of the data prep stuff. So one, uh, I'll start off with supported formats. So uh, SiteVision does support a number of files, VCLs, which is an export out of uh, um, TBC, uh, TTMs or terrain, Tremble terrain models, um, TMAPs, which is a connect map map that uh, if you, you can upload your data set in, in the connect, create a map workspace and, and save that map and, and use that um, in the field with site vision. Uh, SketchUp files, uh, so land, land XML files, IFC shapes, um, geodatabases, Revit, and uh, DWG files. Um, this list here is also on our, on our website. It does help you to determine what is the best file, depending on what you're doing in the field. So if you're using points, you want to look, uh, points and lines, you'll want to look down, down the list and see what file types are the best for that use. Uh, for example, the, uh, the terrain model is only a surface. Uh, you can't use two points aligned with it. And, and so it gives you a good idea uh, of where to go before you get started to go in, in the field. Um, and as I've mentioned probably 15 times now, data collected with the, the EDM, uh, points and lines are saved automatically in, this, in a CSV file, which can be then again, use later if you need to add those into your data. Um, one thing I do like to say with, with the data prep is I've done a number of demos with, with customers um, and, and they always want to use their data, which is, is perfectly fine, of course. And, and But the thing that Site Vision will do um, is highlight the quality of your data. Uh, people, a lot of folks don't understand when you go from a 2D world to a 3D world, how different that is and how uh, your field processes, data collection needs to be slightly different. How you handle it in, in your back end system is slightly different than just viewing it in a 3D map. And then, like I was mentioning, so if I was, if I, you took this out and wanted to show a customer, well, this is what your new site's going to look like. Uh, this. 2D map on the left is not going to tell them very much. It's like, okay, there's going to be a building there. Whereas on the 3D 3D world, you can actually visualize what that's going to look like uh, once construction's done, how the design looks before you even start, 
start working uh, or breaking ground. So that's something to pay attention to when you go into go from the 2D to the 3D world. A couple quotes from actual customers. Uh, I, I like the top one here. The best site vision needs good data to operate efficiently, but it also highlights how bad data can be. Um, essentially, um, what this is saying is garbage in, garbage out is, is what you're going to get. Um, and, and then here, another customer from the UK, if, if you have good data, then all you need is, is a phone. It's simply that easy. If, your data, if you have a good quality data, uh, you upload that to connect, you download it to Site Vision, and it auto places and like magic, it's all there for you to view in the wor real world. So I'll start with the TBC um, uh, workflows. Um, so with TBC 5.2 released, I think um, what was that two weeks ago now, uh, which and also included some updates to the the A Site Vision AR exporter. So uh, say you're using a, a shape up, shape up SketchUp file uh, um, that doesn't have a coordinate system, or you have a CAD drawing from uh, your site civil group. And you know, from my experience, every site civil group I've ever worked with, they don't necessarily use coordinates uh, or real world coordinates. Um, I could bring that that data into a TBC, assign a coordinate system to it, and using the AR exporter. I would export that that data set out, uh, add that to Trimble Connect, let it assimilate, and then I'm ready to start using that that information or that that model in Site Vision. Uh, with the AR exporter, it exports a couple of files with it. That's it's stored with the model in Connect. Um, that Site Vision reads to uh, place the, those models in the in the real world context. Um, as I mentioned, the AR exporter. So this is kind of an example of, of what that would look like. We have a, a surface here that we brought in, um, I believe from, oh, I forgot what program that is. I'm sorry, I'm drawing, drawing a blank. We bring that in, assign the coordinates. We clean it up a little bit if you don't want to, there's some things you don't want in there. Uh, turn those layers on, on or off or, or just remove them and, and use the exporter, AR exporter to uh, visualize that data in TV or Insight Vision. So ArcMap, uh, with ArcMap, it's, it's it's pretty much the same process. Um, you'll want to have uh, a projection file or, or a coordinate system selected within ArcMap. Uh, you would export that information out, uh, upload that into Connect. You could create a new map workspace with the GeoDatabase or a shapefile in, in Connect. Um, and this is a typo here. It says import into site vision should be um, export out and, and then export to connect and then wait for it to assimilate again and then once it's assimilated you'll simply just open site vision load the model go to where you you put that that model or data set and, and then download that into um, a site vision to view in the field site vision the arc map uh, really those measure points that I was talking about earlier if you're using the EDM or the um, AR core to do your do some measurements. Those are saved in that CSV file. You bring that CSV file into ArcMap and, and then turn those into points uh, within your data set. Uh, Terraflex simply the, is the same workflow as ArcMap, or we're using shapefiles or GeoDatabase. You'd create a, a workspace space in, in Trimble Connect, click, collect the data in Terraflex. Uh, sync that, that that data back to Connect and add it to your map workspace, and and, and Connect it will automatically assimilate for you, um, and then that data is ready to open and, and visualize in Site Vision. So uh, some of the resources that we have, um, if you go to SiteVision.Trimble, I have the I have the website on another slide here. Um, sitevision.trimble.com. Uh, you will find under resources, some of these resources here, you can go manage your account. If you manage, go to the manager account, that's where it will open up your license manager so that you can look at what licenses you have out there, uh, when they're due to expire. Uh, um, you can like unassign, assign licenses, different users. 
within your organization. Uh, our video library. This is a. Um, there's a lot of how-to videos that uh, Miko, that's on, on the call here, has put together. He's put together two to three minute videos going through every workflow that I kind of quickly went through here today. Uh, also has some videos of customer data, visualizing that data, insight vision in, in the field. So there's a lot of nice tools uh, and, and guides and videos underneath this video library here um, for you to, to make use of. Uh, we have quite a few, quite a bit of things there to, to get you started. And, and, and user guides that pretty much walk you through every step step of this. Uh, the, we do have some data prep workflow videos up there. There's not a whole bunch, but they're being more being added every week. Uh, we have some really good good users here that are creating those videos for us so that uh, they'll be accessible to customers to use and, and download and watch watch and get really good tips on how to use Site Vision. And for site vision. Um, so the last these last few slides I have here um, are use some of the use cases. Um, what we did with site vision, it was a very open project, and we had uh, what was called an early experience program, where we invited uh, 40 customers around around the globe to uh, participate in using site vision and provide feedback uh, on how they want to use it, what they're going to use it. For, uh, what they're using for, uh, how, what functionality they would like to see in Site Vision. So, some of the next few slides are some of are, are from those customers that provided some of that feedback. Um, so, the first slide here is from a cadastral um, surveying company, and they were using. So, um, you you have some boundary information. You you have a GIS data set. You can load that up in in the Site Vision. You can go out to to, to the properties. Take a look at where the your boundaries are. Uh, another example for cadastral would be if you're walking uh, a power line easement or maybe a sewer line easement, and you need to you're looking for encroachments or, or maybe even some landslides. You're on a slope uh, like oil and gas lines. Uh, they're always looking for slopes, especially in, in the eastern part of the U.S. Uh, slippage of slopes that could bust a pipe. Uh, you, you would walk, you could put that easement in there. Uh, um, you would know right where the easement, rather than having to go out and stake that easement out the whole way, you could see where that easement was with uh, survey grade accuracy, walk that and, and take photos or, or EDM shots, of locations of uh, any encroachments or, or trouble areas like the slides I, I had mentioned. Um, you could, uh, it could help you find any monumentation that you may have in, in, a da in data. Um, while you're out in the field, maybe buried under some stuff, and it could highlight where that that is, rather than getting a total station or your GNSS set up and, and staking out to that point. Um, utilities, uh, utility customers are using it. Um, for for example, A11. Uh, before they do any digging, they'll call A11. They'll come out and they'll paint it all up. You could take the data set that you have, compare that with with the paint markings on the ground. And see whether or not your your data set is up to date, uh, or or maybe the 811 markings are, are off. Um, visualizing all your underground utilities, or it's going to highlight where you may have uh, some. You may have to move a, a main electric line or a sewer line that might be going through your, the property where you plan on building. Um, so it's really a good way to point out any trouble areas before you break ground, which in turn is going to save you time and money uh, moving forward. Um, natural resources is essentially the same as a utility customer. Um, these guys were more uh, above ground where, um, and I'm not gonna show up, but we have a good video where a utility customer had a new power line that was going through this community. They loaded up the, the easements, the power poles, the power lines, in site vision, they took their community and, and uh, the folks that it was affecting out in the field. They showed showed them that they could visualize uh, where the power line is going, how it's going to look on on their property, what what it's going to do aesthetically to to their community, and then provide feedback back to to the designers or the power company, whoever might be putting these power poles in. Uh, 
Oh, wow, oh, that was quick. So like I said, for more information, uh, please visit sitevision.tremble.com and, and there's a wealth of information in there um, for you to um, browse through. Uh, with that, I thank you for listening to me ramble on here and I'll uh, open it up to questions, which I'm sure I have quite a few. <laughs> Hey, Jeff. Yeah, thanks for the presentation. Uh, we do have, like I said, quite a few questions, so we'll try to get through as many as we can. Um, and uh, we'll just uh, start it off right now. So, and, uh, there, uh, Sorry, Michael, I interrupted oh, yeah. you. Should we leave uh, a couple minutes for that, that video? We do have a, a pretty fun video um, we did yesterday. We loaded a Tesla Cybertruck into Site Vision and we're able to visualize it. Um, so we'll get to that, but um, we do have uh, a lot of questions we'll try to get to first. Um, okay. And Jeff, this, this one's kind of a practical one that a few people were asking. They're, they're saying if they load in a model and they don't feel like the alignment is really good, what are some ways to better align your model with the real world? Well, I would definitely use the measure placement. Uh, with the measure placement, when, when you start it, the first, first thing it's going to do is it's going to ask you to walk to their first point, and then it's going to once you've gotten there, it's going to switch over to the 2D mode, and this is where you can zoom in and out. You can zoom right into your um, uh, reference point. Um, so, for example, if you're using existing data, um, there's probably going to be some things in the real world. If you're using data that's designed and doesn't exist in the real world. You probably have some control points around the job site or around the area that were used to collect the data to, to do the design. Uh, I would definitely go use those points. And then like once you're in the 2D mode uh, on site vision, like I said, it will automatically switch to that. You can zoom in to that point really tight and then take your uh, um, measurement on that point. Once you've done one measurement, it switches back and asks to the 3D and then ask you to go to your second point, and then you would do the exact same process. And when you finish that, uh, it says they're each three second shots. And uh, once you finish that, it will do the, the calibration uh, and geo referencing for you to be help better align it. Now, if you have it, if it's a good data set, it should automatically place what you, you shouldn't have to worry much, unless maybe you're in a hostile environment and your GNSS is kind of coming in and out. Miko, do you have anything to add on that, or is that good? Um, no, that's pretty good. Cool. Um, and Jeff, you may have covered this, but somebody um, asked if they have a .cal or .jxl file, do they need to do any measurements to place their model on site? So I think so. what you're saying is so you already have uh, a coordinate system or you have the JXL assigned to um, maybe a SketchUp file or something like that. Uh, you you would load that JXL in uh, connect in the connect folder with your your model, and Mika, correct me if I'm wrong on this one. That JXL name has to be the exact same name, except for the extension, as the model name, and then Site Vision will read that JXL uh, um, for it will use that JXL for the coordinate system. Yeah, that's correct. And it also has to be in the same uh, in the same folder as the model itself as well for it to work. Sounds good. Um, and there's a question with the recommended phones that you showed. Um, is is there kind of a procedure to kind of calibrate those recommended phones? All right, I think I can take this one. So inside right, the site vision. Yeah, no problem. So inside the Site Vision Kit, there is a uh, there is a guiding there's a a little cardboard guide that you can use, and we also have some we also have a specific feature in the app itself that will help you throughout the mounting process of the phone, so you can be sure that it's uh, as accurate as it can be, because it'll it'll find the center of your phone's screen depending on what model of phone you have, and then use that to help you position the phone so you can put the mounting plate on accurately. Yeah, I don't think I mentioned that earlier. So your kit comes with the mounting piece and a template that you put over around the phone, uh, so that uh, in in the uh, configuration when you do the you, you turn on um, place mount, and it will 
change the sight vision to uh, crosshairs that go across the screen vertically and horizontally and you'll you'll line those up with that template and then you'll there's some rubber pads to keep the phone above the, the mounting plate and once you're ready and have everything lined up you just mash that down and it and your mounting plate will be centered where it needs to be on the file type someone asked a question is the dot skp sketchup file is that a standard SketchUp file, or is there anything that has to be unique about it to be used with Sight Vision? No, that is a standard SketchUp file. And, um, and if you're wanting to play with uh, Sight Vision a little bit, you don't necessarily have some data. Um, SketchUp has a, a warehouse of thousands of models. Some of them have coordinate systems, 99% of them don't, that you can actually download and then kind of use, but there's no special uh, um, file. Uh, if you want to use do an auto placement with SketchUp, you'd bring that that SketchUp file into TVC, as, assign some coordinates, or if you have some points in there, you can assign some coordinates to it, give it a coordinate system, and then using the AR exporter and TVC, you'd export that out, and then that way it would do it will have the coordinate system assigned to it, and it will do an auto place when you bring that Insight Vision. Uh, there's a question that came in on using the cut fill option, so it'd be for construction or for survey applications and the, the question is i guess can you measure your model surface compared to where you're standing in the real world um so with the cut and fill so your surface is loaded in sight vision and you, you can visualize that way you can you go out there and with the cut and fill you'll have it on a rod you'll have your rod height in there and then you'll you'll, you'll select that cut fill button that, that i showed on the screen and it will give you uh, show you where you are compared to the uh, where you are in a real world compared to your um, uh, model and then that information is saved in that csv file you, you, uh, maybe i'm misinterpreted the question. yeah and i, I think maybe just, they're thinking if if like really directly under where you're standing so site vision obviously projects that out in front of you but i think they're they're wondering especially if you use it on a pole would you be able to get a direct cut and fill so, off the bottom of your yeah, Yes. Yeah. So uh, I think I understand now. So it's not out where you're visualizing. It's where you are standing with your rod height. That is the uh, that is the cut and fill you're getting is where where you're actually at on the model. Okay. Cool. And, with the and is there a way to know the location? Yeah. Is there a way to enter in the uh, rod height in the system? Yeah, when you when you select that, there's you'll see the option for uh, rod height because you don't have to use a rod with sight vision. But if you're doing cuts and fills or any type of accuracy, then I would highly recommend using a rod with, and and have that height in there. Cool. Uh, a couple questions on the actual device, um, or the phone device that people might use. Is there one you'd recommend out of all the the possible units? Is there one you've tested that you like the most? So I'll let Miko take this one because I've been using my uh, S8 Plus uh, since I started with Sight Vision several many months ago, uh, and I know Miko was done testing with a few different phone types. And I want to say that the S10 Plus is, I think, from what I, the feedback I've gotten is so far been stellar. Uh, but I'll Miko maybe you can add some more to that. All right, sounds good. So yeah, as as Jeff mentioned, the S8 Plus, the S10, and the S10 Plus are all pretty good phones to use with Sight Vision. Personally, uh, for our for my testing purposes, I've also been using a Samsung Galaxy Note 9, which has also been working pretty stellar, especially with the pen feature. It's great for actually it's great for taking the pen on like circling on the app itself if you want to like make a if you want to make a point about a design or something like that. But any of the recommended phones will all work just as well for using Sight Vision. And then along those lines that you know, a lot of people asked about um, iPhone support, um, you know, it's, you know, why, why didn't Trimble develop for iPhone as well as Android? Uh, Jeff, do you want to talk a little bit about that? I, I do. Um, so I manage other software, Android software as well. And uh, that's always one of the most asked questions is why aren't we supporting um, iOS? And it's not that we don't want to support iOS, and we are working towards that. Uh, it's just when we start with these softwares, it's so much easier to work with Android and Google uh, building the apps. Uh, the, the process is pretty seamless. 
and, and easy. When working with uh, Apple and iOS, it, it tends to be a lot more challenging. Now we do have Teraflex on, is on, on iOS, um, and I, I think there might be the only ones at this point, but that is a, a, a big goal moving forward to get uh, all these Site Vision in particular on iOS support as well. Yeah, that, that makes sense. That's just more and then, that, yeah, certainly. And, and a similar question, I think I had this when I first saw Site Vision as um, tablet support. Um, certainly, a larger screen would be interesting to kind of view this on. Um, but right now, it's only offered for phones. Is that correct? That is correct. Right now, it's only offered on uh, uh, phones. And I think the max screen size is seven inch. Mika, correct me if I'm wrong on that one. Uh, it's about 6.7 inches diagonally. Okay. Um, um, it is on our roadmap to, to start supporting bigger screens. Uh, uh, I, I know it is nice when you're viewing with Sight Vision on the phone, you can get a, have a couple, uh, a maximum of four or five people standing around you with the phone. With the phone, everyone can see it fairly well. Uh, if you're gonna have a larger crowd, it would be nicer to have a bigger screen or just something bigger in the field to, to look at. Um, that is on our, our roadmap. And this might be a question for Miko, but uh, there were a few questions that came in on potentially loading in an ortho photo or even a PDF. Can you georeference those inside Site Vision? Uh, yes, you, you can do those. So if you have a PDF or an ortho photo or something like that, you can uh, go into your office software of choice, maybe like TBC, and then uh, we have functions built in into TBC to georeference points on an image to actual points that you may have surveyed beforehand. We actually have uh, one of our upcoming uh, TBC tutorials will focus on exactly that. And in addition to that as well, we also have the feature of you can uh, use a Trimble Terrain Map or a TTM file and then drape your images over that so you can have the image as it's shown over the site's terrain. Cool. Uh, there were also a few questions about the system accuracy. And I guess the way I understand it, there's there's quite an interesting error budget that goes from the positioning of just the GPS or the GNSS, mm -hmm. then the position or the accuracy of what you see on screen, and then even the accuracy of the EDM measurement. <laughs> uh, is is there a way you can kind of talk about the accuracy with those different components, and then even maybe is there a system level accuracy that that is spec'd out? Um. All right. So for the uh, so for the system for the system accuracy. So there are two main accuracy levels. We have the accuracy of the GNSS uh, catalyst system, and we also have the ac accuracy of the uh, EDM that's built into the Site Vision unit. So for the GNSS receiver, we have an expected accuracy of about one to one to five centimeters in ideal conditions. Although that really depends on where you're surveying and what sort of coverage you have under either the VRS now or the RTX networks. And for the EDM, uh, we have an estimated accuracy of about two to five centimeters. Again, under ideal circumstances, that can change depending on what you're working on. Uh, Jeff, do you have anything to add to that? I don't think so. You have to cover it pretty well. All right. Uh, that's a good question. I think Mel, who's also on the product team, is, is working on a a uh, document or some sort of kind of way to explain that as well because it's a unique type of way to talk about accuracy and depending on which part of the system right. you're getting into. Um, there were a few questions that some of the customers on the line would be familiar with Trimble RTX uh, which is kind of a satellite provided correction services that, that Trimble has as well as Trimble VRS now. Uh, are those services included with the Site Vision subscription? Yes, with um, a Sign Vision subscription, it comes with Trimble VRS now and uh, RTX CenterPoint, which CenterPoint is the most accurate uh, um, RTX that we have, and that comes with um, and RTX is is global, where VRS now is fairly limited here here in the U.S. It's in the most southern states and some midwestern states, but it doesn't cover every every region. Good. It, it sounds like an extra extra cost that comes with with your subscription. 
Yeah, so it's it's operating behind the scenes. You don't really have to worry about those subscriptions nope. um, with Site Vision. It's just automatically pulling those exactly. in. So. It's part of the entitlements. When once you've logged in, it it reads in the background the entitlements that come with your your license, and and you won't don't have to worry about any of that that stuff. Yeah, and I think that's also helpful because a, a, a lot of the site vision systems may go out to people that aren't as familiar with geospatial surveying or GIS data collection. And so the system is designed to be very user friendly if, if you've never gone out before and yeah. used the, yeah. those more complex systems. Uh, getting into more complex, uh, potentially, how would you see a surveyor using this tool, Jeff? Well, that's a good question. So I've done a, over my career, I've done a lot of asset management mapping. Um, I definitely could have used Site Vision to visualize uh, the data sets that I had. And actually, most of those were fairly bad. Uh, so I could have visualized, or, or things had changed so drastically, um, I could have visualized that in the field where uh, there's a new parking lot or new building or some, somewhere, you know, oh, this wasn't here before, I could see where uh, my original data set uh, went through that, that property. Um, and, and as I mentioned with the easement stuff, it would be fantastic to go out and, and mark up easements or, or look at easements and check for encroachments in the field. Um, I know I, I, I talked about a cadastral survey customer who was using it for boundary and, and monument, uh, finding missing monuments. Um, I haven't tried that myself. I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a surveyor for 20 some years. Um, so I, I, I could see how that could benefit, but really your boundary would have to be perfect before you went in the field to so that it would work. So you, Probably would have to do a boundary survey first before you could use it. Um, there were some some of the other. Do you, Jeff, do you think it would help with property disputes? The surveyors I know a lot of times called out to uh, kind of work on that. Well, you could load it up and have the two property owners come visualize it, and if there's already a dispute, they're not going to believe it anyway, uh, or one of them won't. And uh, the next, <laughs> yeah, I guess it depends on which property owner asks you to yeah, right. <laughs> visualize uh, it. You're going to visualize yes. it. Somebody is going to say, well, that's not right. And, and right. The drug into court anyway. Surveyor is always getting into trouble somehow. <laughs> um, there's a, another couple of questions that, because uh, we're getting to the end of our time, but I, I think it's worth talking about. A lot of people have been asking questions around, okay, if you have site vision, but now you want to maybe go measure some points out in the field. Uh, maybe you see that you missed some data. Um, are you able to use Site Vision to kind of flip into maybe Arc, uh, I guess, Collector for GIS, which is Esri's app, or even Trimble Terraflex? Are you able to kind of use Site Vision for that, or is it is it a dedicated uh, AR system mainly for visualization it, like that? It's it's just a dedicated uh, visualization tool, and, and like I mentioned, you can do some of those measurements with the EDM or the AR core um, camera uh, and, and then those every all that is saved so if you want to add that in your data I mean, it, it, it's going to take a few steps in the office to get that data in there but at this point there there's you couldn't just have site vision switch over to Teraflex well yeah I guess you could switch to Teraflex but it won't use the the, the DA1 antenna uh, on you would have to change to another standalone antenna to collect the information um, so it doesn't really work interchangeably like that and uh, there was another question on the on a vrs network uh, if you do have access to a private vrs network uh, are you able to dial that in with insight vision um yeah let me just go show that screen Here. so when you go into the GNSS settings with uh, um, Site Vision, and you want to use your own VRS, the first when you open it, it pops up with this little box right here. Just uncheck the Trimble Correction Hub, and then it will pop up the GNSS settings with your entry information, or so you can in, enter that information in. 
Sounds good. So we're getting a close of our time. Um, there were a lot more questions. I appreciate you, uh, everyone asking those. Um, we, I, Jeff, right now, I think it would be kind of interesting to show that video um, of of the Cybertruck okay. before we close out. Uh, okay. It's uh, it's kind of funny in a way because we use the, the new uh, Cybertruck model, but it is actually a good representation to show you how quick it is just to grab a model from SketchUp. So Mika went in, found this uh, model of, of the new Cybertruck on uh, the 3D warehouse, and the video just kind of walks you through how we loaded it in in a few minutes, and we're able to place it in a parking lot and uh, dial it in. So, um, Jeff, do you wanna do you wanna run that? Yeah, I'll show that in, uh, but in real quick. Whatever questions are left, uh, left those are have been recorded, and we'll try and get get to those as quickly as we can. And um, keep your eyes out for uh, upcoming webinars where we'll do deep dives of these these uh, data preps and workflows as well. I, so I'll play that video. Where was that again? Oh, right here. Oh. Not sure what that meant, but you guys seeing that on your end? Yeah, it's coming up now, and I think if you just press play, that should work. It's taking a minute to get to that point. Tesla Cybertruck into Trimble Sight Vision. Show how easy it is. So Miko has just uh, picked it up from Trimble Connect. Uh, I found a model on SketchUp 3D Warehouse. So now he's going to measure uh, where the back and the front of the car, where he wants to place the 3D model of the Cybertruck. So we'll pick the first point. So this is the front of the car, Nico. Yep. This is where the front of the car will be. And now we're going to put it at the front of the car. So that point he just measured, so he's gonna tell Sight Vision that's where he wants the front of that model to be. All right. Now we're gonna measure where we want the back of the car to show up. Now we're doing the Tesla Cybertruck just for fun, but you could do this uh, with any um, 3D model. So if it was a GIS asset like underground utilities, something like that, or uh, maybe if it was uh, something for a survey inspection, like a control point or something like that, you could also place place these the same way. So now that we've measured uh, where we want the model to go, we're going to orient the system with the GPS and uh, the other sensors it needs to georeference the model. So Miko is just walking a little bit in the parking lot, let the system get itself oriented. And once we have it, we should turn around and there should be a cyber truck looking at us. So it looks like the sight vision system is ready. And there's the cyber truck. Within a few minutes, <laughs> we've got a Tesla cyber truck. So Miko, let's uh, walk a little closer, kind of walk around uh, the cyber truck on maybe on the side. Yeah, just kind of show everybody what that looks like. Yeah, so, and then do the transparency so they can actually see it's not a real one. It looks real, but uh, just a great example of how you can use augmented reality um, technology insight vision to take a look at a uh, geospatial asset. In this case, it's a cyber truck, but it could be any number of applications uh, that you might have. So, thanks for checking it out. Thanks, Miko. All right. Thanks for joining, everybody. Uh, thanks, Miko, and thanks, Jeff. And uh, appreciate your time today.